Hey friends, so spectral processing is all the rage these days. It seems like every single week a new plugin or a new device is coming out that takes advantage of spectral processing in some way. And it's for a good reason too. There's a lot of undiscovered sonic territory with spectral and it's all over some of the freshest new music that's coming out. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at one of Ableton's new devices called Spectral Time, which I feel is a really powerful device that most folks have overlooked. The sound design potential here is through the roof. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's a hastily assembled hip hop groove that I have here. Take a listen. So yeah, it's kind of boring. There's not really much going on. I'm gonna hit this Q key and I'm gonna activate all of the spectral time processors that I have running at once in the set. Now take a listen. Yeah, so each one of these tracks has a spectral time on it, as well as I made one as a return track. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mute the, the return track and I'll delete this spectral time and let's just listen to this first track by itself. Just about as boring as possible, right? I'm gonna grab a spectral time and drag it here and let's just take a look at what's going on. So to understand spectral time, you have to realize that it's actually just two different devices. There's kind of a freezer section and then there's a spectral delay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the delay for now and let's just listen to the freezer. So the way that the freezer works is essentially you have this little button and you can do it manually. So you can be like, so I just froze that first note, right? Nothing special, kind of boring, right? Now you could manually turn on freeze and turn off freeze, and sometimes that's fun to do, but I'm gonna turn it on to re-trigger mode. Now you can turn up the sensitivity, and if you activate freeze, what'll happen is, is that it'll activate and deactivate freeze depending upon the incoming audio. So take a listen now. So essentially every single time it hears some audio, you can see this little yellow thing light up. It's clearing the buffer out and then replacing it with the next little snippet of audio. Now, you can change the way that it sounds by going over to resolution. Let's turn it on to ultra. <laughs> That's different. High. And then on low, you get kind of more of like a glitchy kind of crappy digital sound. But each one of these resolution settings has a place and can create vastly different sounds with this device, right? So let's just put it back on high for now. So then we have crossfade, and this is how much time it takes to get between each different freeze. So to listen to this, let's turn the dry wet all the way up. Now, if it's turned all the way down to its lowest setting, which happens to be two milliseconds, it's pretty much gonna be instant, so. Right, but if we start to turn this up a little bit, it's gonna fade between each sampling. So by itself, the freezer is pretty powerful and you can use this to take very staccato sounds and stretch them out over time, right? Now let's take a look at the delay size. I'm gonna turn off the freezer, turn on the delay. And at this moment, it's essentially just a normal delay, right? So we have feedback. Let's go ahead and listen to this delay as it is. And we can turn the time down. Right, or we could switch it to a synced mode. So in this case, let's go to 16th and then you can subdivide the 16th. So now we get. Right on. So that's just a normal delay at the moment. But what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with spectral. And what does spectral actually mean? Well, what we're talking about is frequencies. So what's cool about this delay is that you can start to influence how the delay reacts depending upon the source material. Okay, and the way that you control that is down here in this section. So now the first one is tilt, and essentially it'll take the delay time and shift it toward the lows or shift it toward the highs depending upon which way you go. So with this setting we have right now, I'm gonna turn the dry wet up a little bit more so we can really listen to this delay. Now take a listen to what tilt does. really cool sounds, right? So essentially we're taking the spectra and we're, we're sort of smearing it, right? We're saying, okay, the top frequencies are going to be delayed right on a 16th, but as we go down to the lower frequencies, they're pushed away from the top frequencies and it's causing kind of tsiom. So if we went the other way, we'd go whip. 
<laughs> so then we have the spray control and you could consider this, I, I feel like they should have said smear, like because what this will do is it'll distribute the frequencies and make it a little bit more of a smeary kind of sound. Take a listen. That's without it. And spray is useful for turning spectral time sort of into more of a reverb, right? Now, the last one is mask. And so I'm going to turn the tilt up a little bit more and the tilt down a little bit. Take a listen to this. Now, what mask will do is it's kind of like a choke control for either the lows or the highs. Like if I want the highs to be choked out a little bit more, I'll turn it to the right. Take a listen. Right, so it's kind of limiting or turning down the amount of time that it takes for the tilt or the spray control to occur, right? And so that's for the top end, and then I could do the opposite by choking out the low end. You could almost think of this as like a global time control, right? So another thing that's cool about this is that because we're dealing with time, we can start to distribute that across the stereo field by turning up the stereo control. Take a listen. And then when it comes to sound design, we have a mix control. Like right now we have a dry wet for the entire effect over here, and then we have a dry wet for just the delay. So if I turn the dry wet for the delay all the way up, we get... Right, sounds awesome, but if we turn the dry wet all the way up here, we just have the spectral delay. Super rad. So now let's turn the freezer back on, and what we have now is a situation where the freezer is being fed into the delay, and that's where you can see this control here. At the moment, the freezer is being fed into the delay because of this button. Now let's take a listen. And of course, we can turn the mix down now and kind of get the freezer to come all the way through to the output as well as the delay. Now, that's lasting kind of a long time. Let's go back to the freezer and look at another option. So when you're on retrigger mode, you also have the ability to choose how long the fade in time and fade out times are. So let's go ahead and turn off the delay real quick and take a listen to this. So maybe this is yielding a more usable result when it comes to the freezer going into the delay. Let's go ahead and turn the delay back on and make the fade in time instantly. Oh yeah. Now we can hear that the delay is kind of swirling around your head, right? Maybe what we want to do is just have it so that one note triggers an entire cycle of what's happening here, where we have a freeze and then we have one delay that's doing this cool stereo thing. Well, what I could do is I could just turn the feedback all the way down. Now take a listen. <laughs> That's just so cool. All the way up with stereo. <laughs> Gotta love it. And then you could, now let's say you wanted to do some sound design where this was just the sound you were making, just the swirly part. Just turn the dry wet all the way up. Now, of course, this is gonna be latent compared to everything else. Let's go ahead and listen to this in the mix. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of cool, but I think it'll sound better if we have the dry wet, like maybe at half. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you're enjoying my teaching style, I have a really awesome Ableton webinar that you can watch up here where it's kind of like a speed training where I go through a lot of the essential Ableton skills that you might want to know that'll help make your music more interesting, more creative, and more exciting. So if you want to check that out, the link's down in the description and then up here. Anyway, let's get back to it. So let's move on to track two and listen to what's happening here. So without spectral time, this is just Ableton's upright piano that they made with Spitfire. Sounds like this. And then with spectral time, this is what I did. <laughs> 
And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and build this up from scratch. So I'm going to grab a spectral time, slap it on here. I'll put it on re-trigger mode. And what I'm doing is I'm using sensitivity. And what's cool about this is that it's freezing and unfreezing the track because the piano is coming in and out of sensitivity range. You can see this little yellow thing each time it resamples the audio. I'm going to turn off the delay and just listen to what this does. So this kind of garbling effect is happening and it kind of makes the piano sound like lo-fi, right? We could put it on low mode and get a really, really lo-fi kind of sound. <laughs> but I think that that mid actually is my favorite sound here. And we could mangle this further by maybe changing the fade in and fade out times. So now let's look at the delay. And I should say a really good way to work with spectral time is to turn off the freezer when you're working on the delay so that you can hear what's happening, right? So on this delay, what I'd like to do is kind of make this spread out a little bit more. And so what I'll do is I'm going to be working with the spray, right? I want to kind of make this kind of more like a reverb. So I'm going to turn my delay time down, turn the feedback up and the spray up a little bit. And let's start working with this. And now one thing we haven't gotten into yet is the shift. So Spectral Time also has built into it a frequency shifter, right? Because again, we're dealing with frequencies here. We're dealing with spectral frequencies, right? So let's turn the delay time all the way up and listen to shift. Now, if you go to the right, you're going to have the pitch go up. If you go to the left, you're going to have the pitch go down. <laughs> so, you know, uh, low settings like this can get some kind of cool, like, it almost sounds like a, like a cassette or something, like something like constantly slowing down. Let's go ahead and add some stereo. <laughs> cool, now that we have that dialed in, I'll turn on the freezer. Now this is 100% wet, I'll bring this back and now let's get the piano in there. <laughs> and so I think in this situation, it might make sense to choke the uh, lows out completely with the mask. And then we're going to get a pretty interesting sound here where we're kind of focusing more on the, sh on the frequency shifter sound. <laughs> Super weird. Cool, so let's look at the drums now. So here's the drum sound without the spectral time. And here's with it. Now, drums have a lot of really fun options you can do with spectral time. I might not even rebuild the same thing. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this now. And what I'll do is I'll turn on retrigger, of course, and we'll use the sensitivity yet again. I'll turn off the delay. <laughs> Now that's one option of what you could do. I'm going to shift this over here so that I have more control over the freezer's volume, right? Because right now, if we leave it on the crossfade mode, we're just going to have endless freezing of noise, right? So instead, I'm going to turn it on this mode and we'll have an instant fade in and a, and a longer fade out. So in this regard, it's kind of like a room reverb, right? If I turn this up, I can get a little bit more. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. And yeah, if you turn the dry wet down a little bit, you can get kind of like a pseudo reverb. Now that's cool, but let's go ahead and turn on the delay and now we're going to have some fun. So I'm going to turn this on the time mode, right? And let's put it on, uh, I don't know, a 16th on one. So basically just one 16th. And what I'll do is I'll turn the dry wet back up and I'll turn off the freezer for now. And we're just going to listen to the delay. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to shift the delay toward the top. So I'll go ahead and turn up the shift a bit. Nice. Okay. So now we're going to use the tilt and I'm going to bring it to the right. And so what that's going to do is it's going to remember, it's going to make the lows have longer delay times than the highs. And then we'll get a really cool sound going.
Boom, I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's turn on the freezer and see what we got. So obviously my fade out time is really long, so I've kind of lost that interesting effect. So I can turn the fade out time down a little bit and now we get. <laughs> so yeah, up until this point, we've had the freeze going into the delay. Now let's do the opposite. Let's have the delay go into the freeze. And remember, there's a dry wet mix. Let's go ahead and leave the mix all the way up though at this point and take a listen to what we have. Now we might have to adjust the sensitivity to get the freeze to work because we're changing the volume that's going into it. But let's go ahead and listen to what we got. Now we can turn the fade out time and take a listen to a brand new sound. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And maybe we'll turn the mix down and get more of the dry going into the freezer. So yeah, completely different sounds when you're switching between these modes, right? All right, let's go to the next track. And this is a wavetable bass. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like by itself. Now, another thing that Spectral Time can do is it can add stereo width to your sounds in an interesting way. So I'm not even gonna use the freezer. Let's just look at the delay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the delay time pretty low. Let's try like, yeah, 30 milliseconds. And let's take a listen to what the result is thus far. Now, thanks to our ability to tilt the delay times, we can tilt the lows and highs away from each other and take advantage of the stereo effect. Right now, we won't make any stereo because there isn't any information where we're tilting the frequencies. But as I start to tilt, listen. So yeah, that sounds really good. Now, another thing I could do is I could go up to shift and I can start to shift the frequencies around. <laughs> right, so without the spectral time, we get this. Let's listen with the spectral time. Rad. <laughs> and then the final track is just a shaker, and this is what it's like without the spectral time. And then with the spectral time, I'm using the delay to kind of make some stereo sounds happen. And so the way that I'm doing this is I'm just grabbing a spectral time, turning off freeze, turning on delay, making the delay time very short, okay? So now we can hear that shoop, shoop. We can hear that kind of sound starting to come through. Let's go ahead and use the spray and the stereo. <laughs> so yeah, I could over time for, for the fun of it. Let's go ahead and listen to this with the drum rack. I could over time maybe change the tilt. So I'll look at the uh, automation here and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and change the tilt times so that it's kind of oscillating through different tilt times. This could be really fun. So yeah, you can add a lot of interest with this thing. And then finally, let's take a look at spectral time as a return effect. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to use sync. What does sync do? Well, essentially, it's just constantly re-triggering the freezer over time. And so what I'm doing is I'm using this to constantly re-trigger it every 30 seconds, all right? And so what we get, let's just go ahead and listen to this by itself. So by constantly re-triggering very quickly, we're getting that kind of lo-fi kind of sound. But I'm feeding that into a delay that's highly smeared with the spray. And we get this. Cool, so with all those changes that I've made, let's go ahead and listen to the dry jam. And here's the spectral times. Dry. Spectral. Cool. 
Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you use Spectral Time a lot because you can come up with a lot of really new awesome sounds. And if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you.